Hello, welcome to Getting Started with Scrivener, part four, backing up your Scrivener project, Mac version. I'm Vanessa Keir. One of the most important things you can do for your writing is to make sure that you're backing it up regularly and in a secure location. So let's see how to do that for your Scrivener project. Okay, so here we are in Scrivener. And before I talk about the backup, let me just talk about Scrivener's auto save feature. So as with any um, program on your Mac, you can manually save your Scrivener file by doing a file save or a command um, S whenever you want to just manually save it. But Scrivener also comes with an auto save feature. So if you go up to Scrivener, preferences, and then go down to saving. Now this is Scrivener 3, so it may look slightly different. I think on Scrivener 2, if you go to general, the main screen that comes up already has the auto save um, text showing up. But here you see it says auto save after two seconds of inactivity. So you can change this as you want. And the reason why I really like this feature is that it waits until you have stopped working for two seconds before it saves. I used to use another writing software and it would auto save after a set interval, but it didn't matter if you were typing or not. So if I was typing while it was auto saving and the file was getting bigger, so the auto saves were taking a longer amount of time, any text I typed while it was auto saving was getting lost. It wasn't remembering what I had typed and filling it in after it auto saved. So I was ending up losing a sentence or two while it auto saved, which is one of the reasons I switched over to Scrivener. And then here in Scrivener 3, you have a couple of options. You can take snapshots of changed text documents on manual save. So again, if you go to file save, that's when this would trigger. And then you can also show notifications when you're saving in composition mode. So that is just the auto save feature. It saves right over your the file that you opened. It acts the same as a manual save as far as what file type it's um, saving onto. But the backup is something slightly different. And before um, we go through these options, I just want to say that in my opinion, the best practice is to have your working document in one location, such as your laptop, and your backup in another location, such as an external hard drive or an online storage system, such as Dropbox. Because that way, if something happens, let's say that your laptop gets stolen or it gets corrupted and you can't access your working file, then your backup is somewhere separate. So as you can see, turn on automatic backups is ticked. And then you have a couple of options here. You can back up on project open or back up on project close. I prefer to have Scrivener back up when I close the project for the day. You can also back up with each manual save, but I'm so trained to manually save every few minutes that um, I leave that unticked. Um, and yes, I do manually save frequently, even though Scrivener is auto saving because I want to be in the habit. If I'm at, ever in another program and I'm writing, I want to make sure that I'm not losing work in other programs like, you know, Excel or whatever. You could also back up before syncing with mobile devices. I have ticked compress automatic backups as zip files, which is slower. Um, I do that because my Dropbox has a limited storage um, size. And so I'm trying to get everything as small as possible. I should have ticked use date and backup file names. And then I'm only keeping my three most recent backups. Um, I haven't very often had to restore anything from a backup. I've only done that when I radically made changes to a document without taking a snapshot and then decided I didn't like it and wanted to go back to a previous version. And then backup location is where you go over and you choose the destination for your backups when they are being backed up. So that is it. Um, as far as how you set up your backup, I am now going to just show you what it looks like in your finder because people get confused as far as 
the different structure that Scrivener has. Okay, so here we are in my Finder window. And as you can see, these top four documents, if we go over to the right uh, under Kind, they're Scrivener projects. So I could double click on any of them to open them up in Scrivener directly and my project will load as normal. So these are just my regular working Scrivener files. Now, if during my setup for how Scrivener is backing up my files, I just left the box unticked for compressing to a zip file, then if I go over to this spot, you'll see that this is a backup file because it has BAK in the title, but it's also just a regular Scrivener project. So again, I could just um, double click on this and open it and it would open the project. Although you do get this error message saying that the project is not in a recommended save location. It's stored inside its own automatic backups folder. So this could result in data loss. And I'm going to ignore this because this was a test file and I had changed my backup location just to make it easier to access for this video. But if you get this message, you might want to pay attention and make sure that you are um, opening and saving the backed up file after restore to a spot that's separate from your backup location. So what would the backup file look like if I had ticked the box to have Scrivener save the backups as a compressed zip file? So let's go take a look at that. This is my Dropbox and this is um, all of my current backups. So you can see here that these are zip files. If I wanted to actually restore one of these projects, what I would need to do, I would need to double click on it. And you can see what happened is that it extracted um, the Scrivener project file from the zip file. So you can see that below this um, backup is now the Scrivener project. And you can see that also under this kind column that this is the Scrivener project and this is the zip archive. So now that you have the Scrivener project extracted from that zip file, you can go ahead and then open that in Scrivener. I just want to make one comment about syncing between the mobile and the desktop version. If you're on the mobile, you may see that Scrivener is syncing hundreds and hundreds of files, and that may seem very strange to you, but that has to do with the way um, Scrivener is structured on the back end and how it's um, keeping track of all of the different items in your binder and in your project. So don't be surprised if you do see that there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of files being synced between um, devices. That's normal. If you need to tell Scrivener to back up outside of the regular time, then you can go up to File, Backup, and you can either do Backup Now or you could back up to a different location um, from here. Let's say you need to travel and you want to take a backup with you and you want to put it on a flash drive. So you could use this feature. So that is it. Again, I suggest that you keep your working project and your backup in two separate locations just for security purposes in case something goes wrong. I hope you found this helpful and until the next video, happy writing. Bye.